Welcome to NOCO Link, your Northern Colorado media connection for business, community, and lifestyle. I'm Janice Mount. Well, we have a great program lined up for you today, so we'll be right back after this. The 9-11 memorial is for my 343 brothers who didn't make it. And for my brother. This shows the world that we can rebuild. And that we are strong. It's for the heroes like my dad. This year, the National September 11th Memorial opens in New York City. Join us to honor, remember, and reunite. To learn more or to reserve your visit, go to 911memorial.org. Well, my special guest is Ann Clark from Great Ideas at Work. She's been helping women in business for over 15 years, and she's going to have some tips for us today on how to have a successful business. Welcome to the program, and glad to have you here. Oh, thank you, Janice. Well, talk to us about how much influence women really have in consumer decisions. You know, it's a whole new economy, and a business needs to figure out very quickly how business is being done because it's being done totally different today than it was 10 years ago. Women play an even larger role today than they did even 10 years ago. In fact, there are some buzzwords out there. They, they call it the she economy and they call it she marketing. It's a new way of doing business. You have to throw out the old models and learn these new ways of doing business if you want to not just survive, but if you want to thrive. Right, and so what are some of the ways a business can market to women? You know, it's interesting to me because women tend to look for experiences when they're buying a product or a service. Men, men are different. Men like to solve problems. That's all they're looking for is a solution to the problem. It's like, give it to me fast and, and quick, and by gosh, that'll solve the problem. But not us. We are looking for relationships. And in that respect, companies have had to change how they're doing business. You see more companies with Facebook pages. Companies, even like Coca-Cola, for instance, they've gone out of their way to create a personality that is a likable personality. So it doesn't matter whether it's a product or a service, you have to have a personality. And if you're selling a product or a service, oh my gracious, you had better create a, a, an image that is likable so that people who have never met you will feel as if they know you and will like you. Because if they don't like you, they won't touch your product or your service. I agree with that. But is this a whole new model? It is a new model. It's something that women have been doing business this way for many years. Women started networking groups uh, maybe 15, 20 years ago because this is how women do business. When I tell you that I love your shoes and where did you get them, these days I'll also say I love your business cards. Where did you get them printed? Or Janice, I love your website. Who created your website for you? This is how women do business. We're doing research when we're talking like this. We're not just, we're not just gossiping, we're doing research. And this is, you can apply this principle to marketing and to doing business because if you're smart, you will create all of these little relationships and connections with people so that they will feel like they know you and, and like you. I agree. Well, let's talk about something that I know is very important to you, and it's something that I'm involved with you in with the Colorado Women of Influence, and that is networking. How important is networking for women in business? It is true. You do business with people that you know, and networking is a very cost-effective way that you can get to know each other. You know, instead of Instead of concentrating on the sale, you need to be concentrating on creating relationships. And in networking, that's how you get to know each other. When you network, you get to know people, you give them an opportunity to do business. Those opportunities lead to sales. I agree. Well, um, I would like for you to give a couple little nuggets to <laughs> our viewing audience about how they can be successful in business. Selling is emotional, so you need to remember that first. It's no longer about the, the, the less expensive price or the, or the features. It's about the emotional experience, especially if you're marketing to, to us girls. 
But you, in order to build that emotional element and, and, and build connections into what you're doing, you need to put a little personality into your marketing. You need to put pictures of your pets or pictures of your kids. Or if you have a hobby, you need to include that in your marketing. That's why Facebook is such a great resource for people in business, because that's when we can share a part of our lives. Of course, we have to be very particular about the image that we have created and make sure we have created an image that we want to project and we, and we control it. Because again, people will decide whether they want to do business with you on whether or not they like you. The trick is to make them feel as if they know you even though they may never have even met you. Wonderful. Well, those are some amazing <laughs> tips and tricks that we can implement in our businesses. If you would like more information and contacting Anne, you can reach her at anneclark.com or send her an email, Anne at anneclark.com. Her number is also on the screen. Well, thanks for being with us today, Anne. Appreciate Thank you, Janice. You, make it, you made it fun. Thank you. Don't go away. We'll be right back. <laughs> Lead paint poisoning affects one million children today. If you're pregnant or have young children and your home was built before 1978, you could be at risk. Learn how to protect your family. To find your home's danger zones, the health effects, or just to find help, log on to leadfreekids.org. Well, there's an arts academy in the northern Colorado area, and with us today is Lauren Harrington from Harrington Arts Academy. We're going to learn all about it. Welcome to the show, Lauren. Thank you. Glad Thanks to have you here. Thank you. Well, tell us about the Academy. Okay, well, our tagline is creative expression for all. So we really like to give the students the opportunity to explore all of the arts. And we have an eight-week session. And at the end of the eight weeks, we have a showcase. And they get to, it's a celebration time for friends and family to just give a little glimpse into their class and what they've been working on. So we have a lot of fun. And we offer a variety of classes in all the art forms. And what kind of classes do you offer? We have singing, dancing, acting, improvisation. We also have arts and crafts. And we have classes for group exercise classes as well. We also have on-camera filming, which is our Boo Show, which we're really excited about. And we're going to learn more about that in just a little bit. Well, tell us about some of your art teachers there and their background. Okay, well, starting with Brandon, he taught um, English and Drama for eight years in California, high school English and Drama. He directed over 12 main stage productions and won many awards and he actually wrote two of them himself so it's really exciting. I taught kindergarten for eight years and we also taught at the local community college drama classes as well as speech and debate. We have very qualified teachers. They're all from the Loveland area and we're so excited to have their expertise at our academy. And I understand you host some unique events at your Arts Academy. Tell us about that. We do. We have really fun family nights. We did an 80s dance night as well as a 50s sock hop. We had HA, which is Harrington Arts Academy. We have our holiday program and concert. We also film our Boo Show at our academy and that's a really um, unique opportunity for children to be on camera and acting with Boo and all of his friends. And we have a very special guest in the studio with we us do. today. So Boo, why don't you come on out? Ba -ba -da. Ba -ba. Hi Boo. Hi. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks. Hi. You have a TV show. Yeah. Tell us about it. There's so much you can do with Boo. Yeah, it's a lot of fun and we made it because we like to showcase like the things I like to do, like singing, dancing, drawing, having fun to music. All right. Tell us about some of the characters on your show. Well, we have my Papa Joe. Uh, he reads me stories and he teaches me good lessons. My sister Britt, she sometimes is annoyed with me, but that's what a big sister does, I guess. Uh, there's Jimmy, the delivery man. He comes and brings packages, and it's really fun. I open it up, and you never know what it's going to be. And sometimes it's something magical, like magic glasses. <laughs> wow, that sounds great. Mm -hmm. How did you get your show started? Oh, uh, well, we just wanted to make a show that kind of highlights all the fun a kid could have if they use their imagination and their creativity. 
And some of your shows are available on the internet, aren't they? That's right. If you go to YouTube or we actually have our own website, theboushow.com, you can watch all my episodes. And what are you doing new that you're filming in Loveland? Well, now, um, since we moved to Loveland, we came from uh, California, we now film it with actual kids. Before, it was just one actor playing all the parts, but now kids get to be involved. So maybe some of our viewing audience could come and be a part of your show? Yeah. All right. Well, let's take a look at your show now. Time for fun now. Magic glasses. Round up everyone now. How you doing there, Pilgrim? Lose your blues now. I was trying to fly like Superman, and I super failed. Find your dancing shoes now. Time for rhyming, time for story timing. This one is called Wild Strawberries. How about a peanut butter sandwich? Time to spend some time with Boo. Ring, ring, ring. Everyone you know is here. Silly Papa Joe is here. <laughs> Balderdash, I need a word that starts with G. Fuzzy Hop. DJ, DJ Fuzzy Hat. <laughs> and Brittany too. Tell Mark to meet us at the food court at one. That's not hard. Can you handle that? I'll wait in there for Boo and you. Neighbors drop by. Where's my favorite neighbor? Friendly people stop by. Who goes there? It's me, Boo! Oh, dude! <laughs> Familiar faces and new exciting play sales. How do you make an oversized egg head? <laughs> Whoa. Walk or run now. Come and join the fun now. There's always something new waiting here for you. All right, we're on the set of Boo's movie. Lights, camera, action. There's, There's so much you can do with Boo! I guess it is quite fun. Well, if you'd like more information about the Harrington Arts Academy, you can go ahead and contact them at harringtonartsacademy.com or call 970-232-8410. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Really? Buzz, what's up, man? You left some leaves burning out here. Yeah, I, I just I, there was a I had just came in just for a second. Come on, man! If it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. You could torch the whole neighborhood. It's a good point. There's smoke. Key. Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. Well, there are many great nonprofit organizations in the Northern Colorado area, and today we're going to introduce you to one whose reach is international. With us today on the program is Sebastian Africano. He's the Deputy International Director for Trees, Water, and People. Welcome to the program, Sebastian. Thanks for having me. Glad to have you. Well, tell us about Trees, Water, and People. What is it? So, Trees, Water, and People is an international nonprofit that's been in Fort Collins since 1998. Uh, we focus on natural resource conservation uh, and also community sustainability. So we have programs in Central America, in Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Haiti, and also in Uganda. And we also have programs throughout the American West on tribal lands. What are some of the specific programs that you offer? Well, internationally, we focus on uh, essentially two main activities. Uh, one is reforestation, and the other one is uh, clean cook stoves. So fuel-efficient cook stoves that reduce families' fuel consumptions and fuel expenditures uh, and also reduce the amount of pollution that they're exposed to in their kitchens. And right now you're working specifically on a cook stove project for Haiti and you brought a sample with us so let's take a look at that and tell us about it. So this is a Zanmi Pibois cook stove. This was developed uh, in Port-au-Prince, Haiti uh, with a team of metal workers over the past year and we've designed it to be a rugged uh, fuel efficient a cook stove for the Haitian market to be commercialized throughout the country by teams of vendors uh, and retail outlets and uh, with different partners. So uh, it's handmade out of metal, all local materials with local skills, and uh, it's, we're helping people market it uh, into different uh, cities around Haiti uh, from north to south um, as a commercial good. And this looks like one that has been well used and well loved. Yes, it has. So we have a video that's going to tell you more information about it. Let's go to that now.
There's a certain reverence I feel when I get off the plane in Haiti. I know I've arrived somewhere unique, somewhere resilient, somewhere humane. Anytime I start a new project, I go through the process of settling in, feeling the presence of the people. They remind me that I'm here to do something big and that we're in this together. Several times a day in Haiti, I'll see something that'll make me stop, think, compare, wonder. It's really like no other place I've been to. What gets my gears turning is stepping into someone's kitchen and remembering that 90% of the country is completely dependent on wood or charcoal as a cooking fuel. When you walk into a kitchen and your eyes will start to swell up and tear just from the smoke, it's stifling. And I find myself wondering, how do people sit through this every single day? You see the charcoal haulers coming into Port-au-Prince every day and you can't even fathom how much wood it took to make the tons of charcoal that are on the back of the truck. When I walk into a patch of Haitian forest, I try to remind myself that this is only a small slice of what's left and that we've got to start thinking seriously about how we can begin to turn things around. And that's why I'm here. For years, we've been building a team that's working together to slow Haiti's deforestation, scouring the city for the right people with the right skill sets, to design a cook stove that could be locally manufactured and which could save Haitian families money, create jobs, take some pressure off of the forests, and keep kitchens clean and healthy. We call our cook stove the Zanmi Pibwa, which means friend of the trees in Haitian Creole. And it feels good to watch it make such a positive impact on the thousands of families that we've been able to get it to. best part is, we're just getting started. Well, thanks for being with us on the program today, Sebastian. You have a great program, and thank you for the service you're doing around the world. Great. It's great to be here. Well, if you'd like more information about Trees, Water, and People, you can contact them at treeswaterandpeople.org or email twp at treeswaterpeople.org. You can also call 970-484-3678, and a toll-free number is up on the screen. Don't go away. We'll be right back. I don't know what it's like to be in a war, to be so far away from my family, and I don't know what it's like to be the one who stays home. But I do know this, no matter how patriotic you are or how loving you are, being in a military family can be harder than anyone knows. If you're feeling at a loss, you are not alone. There's help. If you need someone to talk to, please call this number. It's confidential, it's free. Your family needs you, we need you, and thank you so much for your service. Well, in today's economy, unemployment is high and available jobs are few, so you need to be at the top of your game when you're doing a career search. We have brought in today a career and job search strategist and trainer to give us some tips on what you can do to enhance your likelihood of landing that job. With us today on the program is Marie Zimanoff from A Strategic Advantage. Welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. Glad to have you here. Yeah. Well, start off by giving us some tips. How is the economy different from it was maybe five or ten years ago, and what can people do to make a difference in their job search? Definitely. Well, I think that it's no secret that it's become a buyer's market in terms of employers. And so it's way more competitive than it ever has been for job seekers and professionals. Um, part of what most people don't think about when they start their search is focus. 
um, jobs used to kind of come to you and someone would say, oh, you know, I think you'd be great at this or maybe even within your company, they would groom you for the next step. And most of what professionals are finding today is to take that next step, they have to go outside of their company or promote themselves within their company to land that next job. And so that focus becomes so important. What is it that you want to do? Who do you want to work for? And how do you sell that to the employer? It has really become the employee's job instead of an employer helping you move through your career path. Um, so the number one thing that I work with people on when they walk into my office is who do you want to work for and what do you want to do for them? What is the value that you bring? Is that part of knowing the market? It is knowing the market. First, of course, know thyself and then go out and see who's looking for those skill sets. And that's not going to be in job postings, which I think is one of the hardest things that has changed is you're not going to see a position posted that looks interesting necessarily. You may have to go out there and network to create it. I saw a little graphic that is 20 percent of the jobs that are posted are at the top of the iceberg, but 80 percent are down are those jobs that aren't posted. So you need to be networking and getting connected. Yes, yeah, and that's data that comes out every year through the Harvard Business Review. They do a study to ask people how they found their last job, and about 80 percent, 70 percent every year is through networking, someone you know or someone that you get to know. And all of those things, again, really take some targeting. Um, and what I talk with when I talk about networking is really being focused. When you go to a large group, you may meet some great people, but it may not be anything that's going to help you move forward. Uh, and I don't know about for you, but for most of us, that takes a lot of energy to go out and build a network. And when you're doing it in places that might not necessarily get to meet the people you need to meet, it can be a lot of wasted energy. Well, how important is developing your resume? Your resume is the first thing they might see about you on paper, although you hope it's not the first thing they see about you, right? We hope that you've met them, um, gotten in touch with someone, met face to face, and then they're seeing your resume. But if it is the first thing they see about you, you want it to be that good first impression. And one of the biggest things that's changed about resumes is that it's become a marketing piece instead of what we call a career obituary. And most people like that term because it, that's what it used to be. All the things you've done, and really today it's more what are you going to do for them? How are you going to bring value to their workplace? Um, and that's a, something people don't think about. They don't think that way. So how does that look in terms of the outline of your resume now versus what it might have looked like a few years ago? Yeah, the, this is very superficial, but I think when we're talking marketing, we have to realize that appearance matters. And the first thing I always tell people is if their address information is centered and on the top of the page, I can tell that they're probably old school is what I call it. Um, just not up with the new trends in appearance. And so that's one of the first things is that a resume today looks like a marketing piece. It has a little bit, maybe even some color and some design, not overdone, but a nice crisp design that helps draw your eye to information. And then it has really the information that, that the job you're applying for needs to know. So it doesn't have to go through every little detail of what you've done. It has to highlight the accomplishments that show you can bring value. So there are some definite do's and don'ts when it comes to writing your resume and people need to be strategic in learning what those are in order to land that job. Yes, and I think that's the hardest part is that there are tons of opinions about what to do and what not to do. And the hardest thing is learning how to think about it in terms of strategy and what's gonna work for you instead of kind of going with the wind and hearing all the different opinions and getting overwhelmed. All right. Well, that is a lot of great information. We appreciate you being with us on the program today. And if you would like more information about a strategic advantage and upping your game in that job cert, contact a strategicadvantage.com or Marie at a strategicadvantage.com. You can also call her at 970-420-8413. And there's also a toll-free number on the screen. 
and don't go away. We'll be right back. Bring out the action hero in you. Fuel up right and get energized. Be part of the greatest action movie ever. The first movie that puts you in the action. Show us how you train and eat like an action hero. Join in at actionheroalliance.com. We'd like to take a moment to thank the Thompson School District for their partnership with NOCOLINK and to tell you about a very special project that the Thompson Education Foundation is working on. Parents and community members have the opportunity to sponsor a painting by the late Lou Haskew to be placed at their favorite school in the Thompson School District. Lou Haskew was an artist and former teacher in the Thompson School District. She passed away in 2009. Her son, Denny, a sculptor, has donated a framed painting for each school within the Thompson School District. Patrons may sponsor a painting, much like bricks are sponsored for new facilities. One painting will be hung at each of Thompson's schools, including current charters. The sponsor's name will be included on a plaque that will also honor Lou and her son. Proceeds will be placed into an endowment to support the arts in the schools. If you'd like more information about sponsoring a painting, contact the Thompson School District and the Thompson Education Foundation at www.thetef.org or call 970-613-5074. Welcome to my block party. Glad you can make it. The only triple doubles you get come with fries. I can do this all day. Your moves are just gay. <laughs> Using gay to mean dumb or stupid, not cool. Not cool. Not in my house, not anywhere. It's not creative. It's offensive to gay people. And you're better than that. Joining us today on NOCO Link. We hope you enjoyed the guests and learned more about the great organizations in our Northern Colorado community. We'll see you next time. Also, thank you to our partners at Advanced Print and Mail. Located in Northern Colorado, their mission is to assist you with the right printing and direct mail solutions to meet your marketing goals. Visit them on the web at admimail.com or call 970-669-9800. Thanks for joining us on NOCO Link. As always, we'd love to hear from you, so visit us on the web at nocolink.com or on YouTube where you can view previous shows. Special thanks to our partners, Realities for Children Charities, dedicated to serving the unmet needs of abused and neglected children in Larimer County. Janice's wardrobe is provided by Close to Home, where you'll find women's clothing, jewelry, handbags, home decor, furniture, and much more.